It's a very interesting concept to think about. It's drawn some controversy recently with the different rabbinic figures online. Some rabbinic figures online that are speaking about how God needs us and we don't need God. And then there's some other rabbis that are taking much offense to that, saying, how dare you say such a thing? How can you say, exactly, how can you say God needs us? We're nothing, of course we need God. Obviously, we need God, right? That's, that's not a chiddush. We do need God. However, we can mature. We can ask ourselves, okay, great. So I need God, and I'm the needy, and I'm the one that's taking, taking, taking. But who likes to take and only take all their life? person wants to also give, right? And according to the real perush of the word ahava, ahava, which is love, is from the root word have, which means to give. So the truth is, the greatest expression of love is accomplished by giving. And uh, Rav Tversky Zatzal, he says in many of his videos, you don't love a person more because you get more from them. You actually love a person more when you give more to them, because you're invested in them. The more you give, the more you're invested, the more you're committed. The more you get, it's easy to get. Getting doesn't get you more attached or more invested and to really truly love the person more, giving does. So if love is giving, then let me, let me, let me turn on a little bit of a flesh out over here. And we better start to think maybe about the concept of how can we give to God because that's true, the true expression of love. And if we really want to love Hashem, which we're commanded to, maybe we do have to figure out what God needs from us and how we can give it to Him. I know that word is a little bit scary to hear. God needs. How can God need? So it's, about, it's a catch-22 because if God created the world and created us, He created for a reason. But how dare you say that He needs something? So you're stuck. So the truth is this. The only way to really resolve this is um, I'll pull out my Kabbalah card because I'm the, I'm the resident Kabbalist over here. You know that. I'm the Samech Kabbalist. You ask me how I get that position. I have the biggest beard. So that's, I, I got it by default. And I happen to be Sephardi. So that's just, uh, makes it, that just makes it glat kosher. When we speak about God, we have to understand very precisely who and what we're speaking about. Because God is a lot of things. God has how many? At least seven names that we can't erase. And all of these other descriptive terms, which are also a reference to God. He's merciful. He's He's kind, he's a, he's a mighty warrior, you know, he's patient, he's vengeful, he's Yudke Vavke, he's Elohim, he's Kiyashela. In so many names, what's, what's God all about? Obviously, there's a lot to understand. And in a nutshell, it works like this. The Kabbalists have resolved the greatest conflict or philosophical difficulty of creation is that God is infinite and we're finite. How can finite reach infinite? And how can infinite reach finite? How do you bridge the gap? Talk about a language gap. But this, is a, this is a real gap. So the only answer, the real answer, the philosophers can philosophize, but what they're, they're going around in circles in their own head, which is limited. The Kabbalists have received the true tradition from Moshe Rabbeinu, and this is the answer. The answer is when you're speaking about God's essence, the, what we call in Hebrew the Ein Sof, the infinite one, then of course God needs nothing. And God has no shaykhs to the world, and God is just, there's nothing, so, so he doesn't need anything, he's above everything. Like it says in the verse, in tzidakta matitenu, if you do a mitzvah, if you did righteousness, what do you really give Hashem? The answer implied in that pasuk verse is nothing. In tzidakta matitenu, nothing. So the, God's essence is beyond our grasp, absolutely beyond our grasp. When we pray, we don't, we can't pray directly to the infinite ensof, the audience. We can't pray directly to ensof because it's, it's too far to reach. They explain that there's no letter, no word, not even a dot that can represent him. So there's no way to bridge that gap between us and the Ain Sof. To say the Ain Sof needed us would be, would be uh, worse than idol worship, would be absolutely stupid and foolish and also idol worship, Mr. Ahmad. So what are all these names of Hashem? So the names of Hashem represent a limiting result of Hashem. Hashem is, I'm infinite. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of make myself smaller, so to speak. I'm gonna make myself accessible. I'm going to yoga I'm going to come down and become and manifest my, my holiness, my godliness in the world. And that's what we have an access to. Godliness we can connect with. But the ain't so far. So that's the solution. So when, when, when you hear some rabbi say that God needs us, so he's not talking about the ain't so far. He's talking about the idea, which is verses to prove it all over the place, that when God limited his revelation and manifestation in the world so in that sense this world can either go up or down there can be an increase or decrease of, of divine light 
and that means that God can become strengthened or weakened. The verse in the Pesukim in the Torah say it clearly, we can weaken the Pamaya Shalmala, we can weaken Hashem, so to speak, or we can strengthen Hashem. So that's the reality. So now that we understand that when we talk about Shem Hashem, Yud Kei Vav Kei, on that level, we can affect, we have to connect, and we can cause increase of blessing, an increase of divine flow, or a decrease of, of divine flow, and a decrease of blessing. So on that level, we have to ask ourselves, beyond asking Hashem, what I, what, what I can, can I give me this, give me this, give me this, we have to ask, what can we do for Hashem? How can we help? How can we help build up ourselves in this world? That, that's the mature love and the giving that we're speaking about over here. So ultimately, prayer, prayer is in fact uh, built to resemble the holy work in the Beit HaMikdash. Aside from the Beit HaMikdash Avodah, that it kept, maintained the entire world, and all of, the, 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 all of existence received its, its nourishment and its ability to exist from the Avodah and the Beit HaMikdash, there's a saying that if the nations of the world knew how much the Beit HaMikdash was beneficial to them, not only would they not have come to destroy, but they would have guarded themselves from destruction. Prayer is in the, in the place of the Avodah of the Beit HaMikdash. Everything we do when we pray is exactly like that. So what are we trying to accomplish when we pray? We're trying to actually do what, what I just mentioned. We're trying to rebuild up this world in a spiritual sense and facilitate an increase of divine flow and blessing in the world. So when we pray, we actually strengthen the side of holiness. We actually strengthen Hashem on some level. And this is what's implied in these verses. If you want to see a source for what I'm saying, the Nefesh HaChayim explains that we can either weaken or strengthen the, the realm of holiness. Our good deeds are mosif and we build, we build olamot. Our speech through prayer build olamot. We, we are partner in creation with Hashem when we use our power that He instilled within us, the Shem Elohim, to build. And of course, unfortunately, if we're fools, we destroy. So we have, we have more destructive power than any wicked ruler that ever came and rose up against us. Titus, the Russia that thinks he destroyed, didn't do anything. You know what the, what the Gemara compares to what Titus did to the Beit HaMikdash? What do you take when you get ground wheat and grind it? The point of the Gemara is that all Titus did is take a destroyed Beit HaMikdash and destroy it. Which means, what does that mean in the simple talk? He did nothing. He doesn't have access to the upper realms to, to either strengthen them or weaken them. But we, the Jewish people, do. So the end of the day is what Hashem wants from us is aside from obviously to take care of us, and that's why we pray and ask Him for all of our needs, He wants from us to become mature and responsible and do our job to bring this world to where He wants it, to fix and bring the world to its perfection, and then we get the greatest gift of all. Hashem could have made this world perfect all on His own. Instead, He said, I want to make it together with you, because then it becomes our world. The Olam Haba that we're working to get to, and then we will eventually, without Hashem, have, it's going to be our Olam Haba, because Hashem said, I'm going to make it together with you. I don't want to make it by myself. I can make it by myself. But then it'll be just all mine. It won't be yours. But when I let you make it together with me, then it becomes ours. And that's what Hashem really wants and needs from us, is to do our part to fix this world that we're in and bring us to our final destination.